So, Mr. Bruce, I assume you're waiting to know if I will invest. Well, I'd like to know if I'm going to finish this film, yes. <laughs> I have looked into film finance, and I believe the correct terminology is first recoupment plus 10% of the adjusted gross. Well, you drive a hard bargain. I'm not here to bargain with you, Mr. Bruce. These are my conditions. So, you invest? I will not be rushed. I will enjoy my lunch, listen to you all sucking up to me some more, and give you my decision in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> final answer by the morning. I've never wanted to take someone's money quite as badly as this. An objectionable man. Smile, sweetie toy. I was saying it's all too perfect. That is what is bothering me, huh? I strive for perfection, you see, but nothing is ever perfect. Apart from this fantastic situation I have miraculously found myself in. I don't get you. I admit you've done very well. It's hard to pull off a thing like this. You're all con artists. Hey. Thank you for doing this, Albert. It really means a lot. It's a good concierge, it's hard to find. Oh, it's a different world these days. Computers, key cards. I know. Is everybody else getting younger or are we just getting older? <laughs> <laughs> you ever thought of retiring? Oh, heavens no. Old Griffiths don't retire, they just simply fade away and try to con their way into the pearly gates. <laughs> we had some times, though, didn't we? Yes, we did. We did indeed. So what are you going to do with yourself, Harold? My wife and I were talking of moving to Benidorm. Marvellous. We put a few pounds aside, mostly from you. Ah. That and our pension should see us in good stead. Well, if you're ever sitting in a pub someday and a lightly-looking Mark walks in, you've got my number, right? It's a promise. <laughs> you know, Albert, there's one man I wish we'd really got to. Oh? I have two sisters. They work for him. Pardon my language, he's a... Bastard. Govinda Samar. So why didn't Harold ever put him in a frame? Well, he's based in Radford, but he travels to London once a month. He stays in one of those service departments that Harold took care of. He's going to be there for two weeks this trip. What does he do, Alvy? Well, he runs a network of small factories making counterfeit designer clothes. Look! Are these bloody coffee stains? No drinking! You are here to bloody well work! Do you hear me? Yeah, otherwise known as sweatshops. I've seen some of those places. I tell you, you wouldn't keep your dog in them. Harold had two of his sisters working there. So where's he from then? This is Samar. He was lured to the UK in the 80s, where Thatcher's Britain made it a perfect climate for him to set up his factories. How rich? Very. Well, that's a start, isn't it? OK, how do we get to him? Well, before he came to the UK, he tried to become a Bollywood actor. His father put a stop to this, and Samar took over the family business. But his acting days filled him with a passion for Bollywood films. 
So Harold says he spends every weekend sitting in cinemas. The angel scam. Uh, not being funny here, kids. Last time we did the movie Investicon, I got shot. Well, don't worry, Danny. If anybody's going to pull the trigger this time, it'll be one of us. <laughs> Great, so we'll just keep it in the family, yeah? Are you sure the Bollywood thing is the way in, Albert? I'd say so, yeah. Question. Anybody noticed that none of us are Asian? He's got a point. I mean, do we know anything about Bollywood films? Well, not yet, but we will. Word of warning, Samar is a perfectionist. So if we do this, it has to be perfect. Well, perfect is exactly how I like things. I thought it might be yours. Oh my goodness. Thank you very much indeed. Did you see this picture? Yes, it's an extraordinary movie. This guy's a bit of a control freak, so I need the profit breakdowns on the last half dozen Bollywood hits. Names of actors, directors, everything. And I want it all when Albert brings this guy in. How's this video going? Yeah, I'm just regrading it to look like film. It's a wedding video I got of me mate Rocky. You won't have more than four or five minutes, Wesley. Should be enough. Bored, Danny? Not much research needed to be a chauffeur, is there? Maybe you should take up a hobby. Like what? Knitting. <laughs> Gardening. Gardening? Yes. Danny, we don't have a garden. No, but... Listen up. My old nan, she had a little flat. She used to have loads of potted plants. When we were little, we used to help her. And what would you grow in these pots? Herbs. <laughs> Don't laugh. Herbs? <laughs> OK. Flowers, then. <laughs> Listen, you won't be laughing, mate, when you got the sweet smell of begonias and whatever wafting through the place. Begonias and whatever. Yeah, he really knows his stuff, doesn't mm. he? Oh, leave terms. him alone. <laughs> I think it will be lovely. I don't have to patronise me, Stace. <laughs> All right, maybe a little bit of patronising. <laughs> what about the script? Oh, yeah, OK, well, there's uh, a lot of love stories, boy meets girl, uh, class differences, family disapprove. Basically, Romeo and Juliet set in India. Yeah, more or less. Yeah, I've taken a script about ten years old, changed the character names, locations and stuff. I'll stick in a few new scenes and bingo, yeah? I saw one of them films once. Yeah, he used to go out with an Indian bird. <laughs> Cracking bird. Did this amazing thing with a. We have a mark. What's the matter with you, girl? Don't you understand plain English? Then listen. I want the slipper delivered here. Or perhaps I should contact your manager. You can know how incompetent his staff are. Make sure that you do. So Ma thinks I'm Harry Kaplan, a movie investor who's been offered a script. But I'm nervous because it's a Bollywood movie, so he's agreed to look at the script for me. I told him 